All right, the purpose of today is to advise you about recent arrests for Task Force Murray, um, which involved the arrest of a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old youth who were planning to carry out an attack on a country school. The allegation is that these youths were planning to carry out an attack that would have resulted, if successful, in significant loss of life and casualties. We will allege that that attack would involve the use of firearms, homemade explosives and incendiary devices and, as I say, um, would have resulted in significant casualties. The Young Offenders Act prevents me saying anything that would identify the school, specifically the school, and prevents me from saying anything that may identify the juvenile involved. In early November 2017, um, Major Crime Investigation Branch and Riverland CIB joined to form Task Force Murray, and that investigation was led by Major Crime. That investigation was conducted with a degree of confidentiality to ensure um, the greatest uh, likelihood of a successful investigation and to ensure community safety. Information was first received, information was first received by Riverland Police on the 3rd of November um, about a possible um, attack on the school, but at that stage it wasn't known whether that was rumour, innuendo, gossip and whether there was any substance at all to it. Riverland Police um, took action and on the, after some investigation on the 7th of November conducted a search on the juvenile's home and found him in possession of prohibited weapons, homemade body armour um, and materials that could be used to make bombs or incendiary devices. The youth was arrested and has been remanded in custody since and we will continue to strongly oppose bail. On the same day, an 18-year-old youth from the Riverland was arrested for aggravated threats to uh, kill and that person was remanded in custody and has been in custody since. He's due to appear in the Adelaide Magistrates Court on the 30th of January 2018. On the 24th of November, the juvenile was further interviewed by detectives from Task Force Murray and was charged with soliciting uh, to kill and he will apply, he will appear in court on the 5th of December um, where we will again um, strongly oppose his bail. The investigation is drawing to a conclusion but is still ongoing at this time and it is likely that um, there may be further charges laid in the near future. We're extremely grateful to those students and people in the Riverland community who came forward with this information. Their actions and the actions of local police prevented what could have other been a significant loss of life in the Riverland, so we're extremely grateful to those people. Um, what we need to know now is we'd encourage um, parents of children in the Riverland to discuss what's happened uh, with their children and to ask them whether they have heard these rumours, whether they've heard any information about what these youths were going to do and if they haven't already been spoken to by the police for them to contact us through Crime Stoppers tonight. I'm happy to take your questions. Can you set some light on how these rumours first came to the police's attention? Um, what happened, um, the youth had been talking to other people in the community, other young people, and... Trying to get them involved? No, more about... Um, it's difficult because I, I don't want to discuss the evidence of it, but it's fair to say that they they told some other people about what they were intending to doing. They told other people, and soon it became known to quite a number of people. How close did they get to carrying out the attack? Um, we believe that most likely the attack would have occurred, if not stopped, before the end of the current school term. How did you know the potential victim? Was there a targeted person or group of people, or was it going to be a random...? There were no specific individuals to be targeted, but the faculty and students. What led police to believe that these threats were credible, not just um, As you'd appreciate, um, you only have to look at what happens elsewhere in the world. Um, when you hear these sort of things getting bandied about, um, it warrants police taking it seriously. Um, and even though it might be rumour, it might, might not amount to anything. Um, every time this happens, we treat it seriously um, and, and it requires an immediate response. Parents at the time were concerned about this of the arrest, 
Yeah, I'm completely confident with my um, decision um, not to publicise this at the time um, because I believed that we would have the greatest chance of a successful investigation if we maintain confidentiality over the information and what we are doing and that that in turn would ensure the community safety. And you're confident there was no risk to the other members? Of there was definitely no risk because both the offenders had been detained and we had no evidence to um, prove the involvement of anybody else. Are you investigating whether anybody else might be involved? Beg your pardon? Is it possible that anybody else might be involved? There's no evidence to suggest anybody else is involved and there has been no evidence along the way to suggest anyone else is involved. The further charges that you mentioned, what are, the, are they in relation to these two individuals? Yes. The yes. The 18 year old was originally detained under the Mental Health Act, is that still... He was originally detained in respect to the criminal charge and then he was detained under the Mental Health Act for an assessment and then when that assessment was complete, he was taken back into police custody. So at no time um, did either of these people uh, leave police detention. Were both the, uh, those arrested uh, school students? Sorry? Were both those arrested school students? Were they both students at the school? Yes, they both had a relationship with the school. Were they both current students? Yes. Can you shed any light on the firearms found at the home? Uh, no, there was no firearms. Were all the weapons in there? Um, Body armour, knives, um, there was evidence of incendiary devices, those sorts of things. Homemade devices? Yes, yes. What year level were the two students in? I can't say anything that might identify um, the juvenile and I can't answer that in respect to the adult because that might identify the juvenile. I know a lot of people know who the youths are and I know who they know who the school is but there's pretty strict laws that prevent me from saying anything. Final questions please, Carol. How shocking is this? Look, it, it, it's just a, it would be unbelievable to think that this sort of thing could happen in South Australia. I'm, as I said, extremely grateful to the community uh, in the Riverland for coming forward uh, when they did. I'm extremely grateful of the response of the local police and, and there is no doubt in my mind that we've prevented um, a catastrophe. Is this kind of the first time you've come across an incident or potential incident like this with particularly such young offenders in a school here in South Australia? Um, I'm not aware of us having something like this in recent time, but that's not to say that it hasn't happened some other time. So is this the closest we've come to a, a potential school massacre what we see in the US? Um, I think so. Were both boys equally involved in the planning or was one more mastermind? Uh, I, I won't go into that, but it's fair to say that we believe that they were actively planning, that there was a real threat and that it was likely to have been carried out if it hadn't have been thwarted by the police and the actions of the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.